Good evening, everyone. We greet you today in the name of the Lord. And we say welcome in to this edition of uh, Thursday Night Path to Ministry. Thursday Night Path to Ministry. I am your host, Elder Ronald Smith Jr. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. And we ask uh, uh, that you will come on in and that you will interact with us today and uh, Deacon Clarence. We ask that you would uh, um, make the comments, greet uh, the other people that are on uh, tonight as it shows who's on, say hello. We want to interact, okay? This is, this is uh, your brother, this is your sister, this is your family. Uh, we are interacting with one another amidst the chaos in our world. You know, our world is currently in chaos. And so we have to find a way to stay in the vein of fulfilling what God has purposed in the land. Listen, we are not of the world, even though we are in the world. So even though the world is in chaos, we should be operating out of peace. We should be operating out of wisdom. We should be operating out of another source. Uh, than what the world is operating. So tonight, we just greet you. We ask that you would just interact with us. If you have any questions, post them on, and we'll try somehow, myself and the great deacon, to accommodate your questions. But today, we are moving into another chapter uh, of the prophetic realm. I said we would be dealing with the prophet for quite some time. And today, we're moving from... <clears throat> development of hearing and seeing, which we thank God for Sister Trina. We're going to have her come back in another segment uh, to deal with some other things because I, I feel that she's very insightful. She's very powerful, very practical, and she's got a lot of experience in these areas. And uh, I think that these types of voices are helpful to those of us who are actually going through the process of becoming functional in the prophetic okay this is this is this is what training is about it's not just for us to get a bunch of book knowledge it's for us to put the feet on the ground and move hallelujah well you know if god is spending over a year on the prophetic something got to be moving there's a whole lot of stuff that we can teach y'all why like the lord has us here because it's needed so today we are dealing with uh, the processing of the modern day prophet. Now, I hear people saying, well, I might as well tune out because I'm not a prophet. Wrong answer. These are things that are going to help us from the Bible to understand the prophet, to understand some of us who are prophets, to understand ourselves. Some people know they're a prophet, but they're in secret. They can't say nothing. They're scared to say anything because that's where they are in God. And some people don't realize they're a prophet, but they are. And so what we're talking about is the process that God puts people through whom he has called to be a prophet. And so I'm going to just read these, these out. And, and some of us have heard uh, a lot of this, <clears throat> especially uh, Sister Tanya and Sister Monisha and Sister uh, Briggs have heard a lot of this because this is, was part of, uh, of what the Lord gave me as we were in training. But there's, there's five parts that I've come to uh, recognize in the scripture. Number one is the call of the prophet. Number two is the preparation. Number three is the separation. Number four is approbation or approval. And number five is office mantle assignment, okay? And so we're going to walk through this. Why are we going through this? Because I want you to know that a person who has a gift of prophecy may just jump right out and be activated in prophecy. Where a person who has an office who has a prophetic assignment, who has a prophetic mantle, who has 
a what I want to say a governmental office in the body of Christ as a prophet to function in that role there is a process of that person becoming um, I don't want to use the term qualified I want to use the term usable huh that's a, that's one right there now if we had people at church, they would be saying, amen. But since there's nobody here, then that's why you hear the silence. So number one, we're going to deal with, I'll go through it again, the call of a prophet, the preparation, the separation, the approbation or approval, and the office assignment mantle. That's all one thing. So we got five stages. Now, one thing that I want to say, anytime that we're dealing with prophetic, is that, listen, you can get your blueprints, that's fine. You can get your one, two, three, four, five points, that's fine. But listen, everything is not so clear cut and dry. Amen. So what we're doing is we're giving you principles that applies, but everybody is not going through a 15 year process. That's right. Amen. Some may be 20. Mm -hmm. oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you thought you got off. You know, some it may be seven. Yeah. It depends on the vessel and how God has appointed what it is there are to do. Have you ever heard of the verse that said, to whom much is given, much is required? Yeah. See? And so if you're called to do much, it's going to take a whole lot of preparation. Okay, if you got seven or eight manifestation gifts, you ain't going to just jump out the closet with eight gifts. You're going you're gonna to fall into the condemnation of the devil because you're going to think that you are Hercules in the spirit. And so God has to perfect that person in a great way. He has to refine. He has to prune. He has to break. He has to mold. He has to rebuild. He has to set it on fire. Purify. Cleanse. And then maybe several years later, here they come with something that is valuable. Praise God. So we're going to go through this, and I appreciate all, all that are tuning in and all that are attending, because this is important. You may find yourself here, okay? And it's very encouraging, and I'm speaking as a prophet, it's very encouraging to find someone that is ministering to the place you are in your process. Because a lot of the times, a prophetic process is secret. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you ain't at the seminary. We know at the seminary, you at, you at year number three. One more, I can go on and apply for a job. Mm -hmm. Well, it don't work like that in the prophetic. Mm -hmm. God is the teacher. Not saying you can't go to a prophetic school, but God is the teacher. And God says when you are approved. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Yeah. Let me get back on these notes because I might really get in the Holy Ghost. All right. Call. The call. The call. This is the beginning. Okay. The call of a prophet. We want to start with Samuel chapter 3. We're going to look at a few examples. But what I want to talk about is important because the first principle I want to make is that a call of a prophet does not come from man. It does not come from an apostle. It does not come from your pastor. It does not come from your mentor. A, a call for a prophet comes from God. All right? Now, a man can confirm it. And a man can announce the call. But the call originates personally with the individual from God. This is so important. This is so important. One reason why you will not struggle with who you are is because God makes it plain who you are. He gives the prophet a supernatural experience with him, a personal, supernatural, extraordinary experience. Boy, if you were taking notes, that's going to be hard <laughs> with him, okay? They prophets have a divine call. This is the beginning. Okay? Now, so let's look at this. The first thing we're looking at is 
a personal, extraordinary experience with God. We said we're going to start at Samuel 3. We'll do a lot of reading today. And I'm telling you, we sure not going to get through all this because it's so much. Samuel 3, uh, starting at verse 1. The child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli had, was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see before the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep that the Lord called Samuel. Okay. And he answered, here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou called me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and he lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not, my son. Lay down again. Now Samuel did not know the, yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again. So what I want to say is that when God's purpose is for you to be a prophet, he, he makes no, uh, he holds no restraints in making it known to you. If you're questioning whether you are a prophet, it's definitely not time for you to be saying you are. <laughs> you know? Now, just because you prophesy or you dream or you have visions or, or, or you have some type of supernatural experience, that does not qualify as, yeah, all prophets are prophetically gifted, but there's people who are not prophets who are prophetically gifted. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't put yourself where God has not put you. That's good. I don't care what your pastor say. I don't care what nobody say. God is going to personally let you know. He came to Samuel three times and he didn't get it. Finally, Eli perceived what was going on because he was experienced with God. Yeah. This is a good point to us that even though uh, we may not understand, God sometimes can use people to help us. He can use people to help us, steer us in the right direction. But it was not Eli that let him know that he was a prophet. Huh. Okay, let me keep reading here. So the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lay down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood. And, oh, this is too much. And the Lord came and stood. I had to stop right there, y'all. Please forgive me. When we see the Lord standing, this prophetically is a symbol of judgment. Anytime in the Bible you see the Lord standing before he speaks, now, it may be somewhere where it's not, but there are several. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. There are several examples when the Lord comes standing and speaking. It is a reference to judgment. Okay? And so when the Lord came, of course, he didn't understand all this, but the Lord came standing and spoke to Samuel and revealed to him what his purpose was for Samuel and prophetically, what was going on in the priesthood. And so I'm going to stop reading there. It's so much more. But I'm going to stop reading there because God personally let Samuel know what he wanted him to do and who he was to God. So much so that it made him afraid to do what he was supposed to do. And so I want us to know here that we must be able to identify the call of God in our life as a prophet. Oh, my God. Here's something else I saw in here. That also when God uh, uh, calls a prophet and sends them, there is a need. You don't just get prophets just because just, well, I got three pastors. Let me get three prophets. 
No, there is a need. Okay, here in the priesthood, we see that the lamp was going out every night. The lamp in Leviticus, it was never to go out. So we have, what well, we have moral degradation. We have spiritual uh, um, degradation. It, it, it had declined the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord, the keeping of his precepts, principles, and laws had declined. And we all know the story about what his sons was doing. Okay, and so he rose a prophet up right in the midst of the mass. Yeah. <laughs> you wonder why you in the, where you at? There's a purpose. That's good. I'm not gonna give no examples on that because then you might uh, some names might come out. <laughs> okay, but look at you and your call. And your call is connected to a purpose, a reason. Something that you are there to do on behalf of God. Oh, okay. So it's a personal, extraordinary experience with God. God came to this child and revealed to him the judgment that was coming on the house of Eli. Okay. Uh, now let's go to another one. Uh, let's go to Jeremiah. 1, 4 through 10. My next point, I said a personal ex extraordinary experience. Another point is that they can be ordained. Prophets can be ordained from birth. Mm. Now notice how I'm wording this. Can be. Mm -hmm. Now there are some schools of thought that all prophets are ordained from birth. Okay? I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they can be. Okay? Now, we see here in Samuel's life that there was some connection to his birth. Mm -hmm. Now, he wasn't called a prophet, but we see the setup from God when he gave Hannah the answer to her prayer, and she dedicated him to the temple yeah. at, birth. at birth. So he was set up. Now, this is somebody who probably was ordained from birth. Even from his birth, we see him getting ready to do this special work. Okay, Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10. So they can be ordained from birth. There are others who we don't have that information. Okay? Uh, 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 there are some who, who was in the midst of working, but they was in the priesthood. They was in the midst of working, and God calls them as a prophet. And we don't see anything about their childhood, their birth, none of that. And so I'm not saying either. I'm just saying it's possible that that is the case. You may see in your own life that there were times you was prophetic when you were six and seven. And you just now walking into it at 40. Okay? It's possible that from birth you have already been handpicked and chosen. All right. Jeremiah 1. Four through ten. Let's read this here. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10. It says, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then I said, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I'm a child, for you shall go to all that I send you, and whatsoever I command you, you will speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I'm with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, to plant. Now, the next thing I want to point out is, okay, they have a personal extraordinary experience with God. This is a part of the call. You can be ordained from birth, okay? Uh, also, it carries with it a defining or revealing of an assignment, not necessarily activating it, okay? Carries with it, the call carries with it a defining or revealing of the assignment, not necessarily act the activating of it. So what I'm saying is, at the, at the point of being called, he may uh, uh, alert you 
and, and reveal to you what it is he purposed you to do, but you may not necessarily begin to do it at that time. It's a part of the call. It's where he is awakening you to who he is and who he purposed you to be. Here, Jeremiah, he, he is letting him know as a younger, young guy that, listen, I'm putting you over nations. He's like, I can't do this. Of course you can't. But I'm going to do it through you. Let me put my words in your mouth. And so it is, a, it is an extraordinary experience that he's having. He's also, we see him ordained from birth. But we also see his purpose and, and, and his uh, assignment being revealed. Okay? His assignment is being revealed. Now, I want to say this because this is why I tell everybody in the church, have a journal. There are things that you could have wrote 7, 8, 10, 12 years ago that helps you understand who you are to be and who you are now. Coming from God's revelation of your purpose and assignment. All right? Now, let's go to the next thing. Let's look at one more here. Um, let's go to Ezekiel 2. And then we're going to move. We're going to move. Ezekiel 2. Ezekiel 2. We're going to start at verse 1. Now, before chapter 2, Ezekiel is having a great vision. I mean, he's seeing whirlwinds. He's seeing uh, heavenly creatures with different faces. And he's seeing angels. And I mean, he's seeing the, the wheel in the middle of the wheel. What is that? Don't ask me today. <laughs> you know, he's seeing stuff that is unexplainable, might I say. Okay? Some things that we explain... I think that there's also a greater depth to it. I agree. But uh, he's seeing God on the throne. He's, he's, he's having this great experience with God. And at this time in chapter 2, he, he begins to hear. And he said unto me, the one that was on the throne, he fell on his, fa he fell on his face when he heard the voice of God. He said, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. And the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me on my feet. Talking about a supernatural experience. Now, see, that was all different. Isaiah had coals put on his mouth from an angel that get him off the tongues of the altar. Samuel saw the Lord standing as a judge. You know, Jeremiah ate, a, ate words. But here, Ezekiel gets the spirit in him that makes him stand up. Yeah. I mean, this is, listen, every individual call is different. Yeah. Amen. It, why? It's because God needs to give you something that is for you and your assignment. Oh, my God. This man right here, you ever read Ezekiel? He had to do some crazy stuff. And I think he needed a supernatural touch. I mean, he needed a Holy Ghost touch because he laid on his side for 300 some days. Mm. He ate, uh, it wasn't human boo-boo, but it was supposed to be human boo-boo to represent what was going to be happening with God's people, but he ate cow's dung. Mm. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Had a wife to die and he couldn't cry. She was pretty too. The desire of your eyes will be taken with a stroke. Don't even lament. Don't even mourn. What? This pretty woman's gone. It took it, it supernatural and powerful. The spirit came upon him. Let me keep reading. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send you to the children of Israel, a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me, and their fathers have transgressed even unto this very day. For they are impotent children and stiff hearted, I do send thee unto them, and you shall say unto them, thus saith the Lord God. And whether they will hear or forbear, hey, that's not your responsibility. If they hear it or they don't, if they accept it or reject it, that's not your responsibility. Ezekiel, 
You just tell them. This, this, this is, now we're moving into preparation because the prophet must not be a people pleaser. Mm. Okay, let me go on here. And he said, verse 6, Thou son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with you, for you uh, do dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. You shall speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or forbear, for they are most rebellious. Look at look at look down in verse number nine. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent to me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations, mourning, and woe. Okay, he ate it and was like honey in his mouth. And so we see Ezekiel with a personal, extraordinary experience. We also see, we don't see him called from the womb. Do we see that? No. We don't see that. But what we're saying is it's possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I don't want to, this is no slight on nobody that's saying all prophets are called from the womb. When we deal with the Bible, we want to be as careful as possible as what we're saying. Okay? Let's just be that type of person. I want to be very careful with what I say. Because guess what? All it takes is one of these young, fired up dudes like Brother David to come say, uh, Brother Ron, mm -hmm. I've seen something in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking like a nut. Because <laughs> I just stood up here, you know, mm -hmm. and it hit my hammer on the thing. Yeah. Come on. Let's be very careful. Let's be confident in what we're saying because it's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's how you want to operate. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember how I said you want to walk before you be an astronaut? Yes. <laughs> you want to do that. So if, I, if I'm just quick to repeat something somebody told me, I, guess what I am in the prophetic? I'm not cautious. Mm. So did the Lord really say that to you, Brother Ron? Are you sure? See? Okay, let's move on. So the call is very important. We looked at these things here. Uh, uh, the personal extraordinary experience. You can be ordained from birth. Uh, it carries with it a divining, defining or revealing of an assignment, not necessarily the activating of it. Why am I saying this? Here, Ezekiel is told by the Lord after this great experience to go amongst the people and sit. And he sat amongst them astonished for seven days, and the Lord shut his mouth. Why? Because I'm not activating you yet. You still got some preparation. Yeah. You still got some things I got to work on. And so uh, just because I'm called, listen, here, here's the New Testament principle. Many are called. Have God shown approval yet? This is important. This is why we have to really be in connection with God the Spirit. I'm not moving off nothing. You know, I, I got this in my journal. A prophet is not a word whore. Can you say that in church? Okay. The prophet is not a word whore. Yeah, what, uh, what the Lord, I don't know what the Lord is saying because he hasn't said nothing to me. Mm, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> you know, well now I can pray for you, mm -hmm. but you're not getting ready to uh, uh, manipulate me into giving you nothing. That's good. Because he told Ezekiel, shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. After he put the ro he put the roll in there. He had the levitation mornings and woe. It was there. But I don't want you to say it right now, partner. Chill. This leads us right into the next phase after the call comes, preparation. Now to me, this is my own personal opinion and from several things I've seen in the Bible, I feel like uh, next to uh, 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 actually the assignment, this is the most important part. Because, you know, your assignment may only be for a year. But you may have to prepare for that year for several years. 
But if you get the preparation wrong, mm -mm -mm. you're going to get the assignment wrong. That's good. Or you might say the right thing, but you might say it with a merchandising spirit. That was that that one came out to the Holy Ghost right there. Why? Because you 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 ran in the prophetic and you was influenced by media. Yeah. And so you thought that's how it's supposed to operate. You thought you're supposed to uh, pray, then preach, and then run through the building and prophesy. Mm -hmm. And so that's your yeah uh, scope. Mm -hmm. But guess what? God may say preach the gospel and shut up. Well, if you've been prepared to fear the voice of the Lord and have total obedience, you ain't going to have no problem just preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. Even though they called you as a prophet, mm -hmm. you better do what the Lord say. This is a part of the preparation. Okay? Let's, listen, let's look at this. Once called, preparation begins. This refers to making one ready to be used in a specific task by God. Now listen to these, these things I got here, these little nuggets. Some are willing to train them, but they're not ready. Mm, so true. <laughs> Boy, God is amazing, the stuff he can tell you. Listen to this. Some are available, but they're not ready. Mm. They're willing. Oh, yeah, they'll start up a website. And, and you have a nice little name to it, the prophetic moment, you know, and all this, and they just gone. But are you ready for that? Well, who did, I don't determine that. The, the Father determines that. The Lord who appointed you in the prophetic, he determines that. Okay? Some are gifted, but not ready. That's good, Pastor. Mm, 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 mm. I'm reminded of a situation where there was two apostles and they was, they was, the names are left out to uh, preserve the innocent. <laughs> and they were kind of in a, they didn't agree. And it came out in their dialogue over the microphone. Mm. And so what I'm saying is, to the people who admires and looked up and is following, it leaves them with a nasty taste in their mouth. Yes. Because you was appointed to do a certain thing, but you was not in the right spirit to do what you was appointed to do. So therefore, the ones who was uh, 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 recipients of the filth are left to walk away and rummage for something good. Wow, this is true. This happens. It does. This happens. It does. Because we don't allow ourselves to go through preparation. And this is not a, uh, you know, after the first six months, now preparation is over. No, preparation continues. Because as you move from faith to faith, to glory to glory, to assignment to assignment, realm to realm, different, uh, when I say the word dimensions, I mean levels of awareness in the spirit, dimension to dimension, there must be preparation for that. Because you got to know what to say and what not to say. Mm -hmm. Some stuff you ain't even supposed to say. Wow. Can I get back to my notes? Yeah. Now, uh, some are gifted but not ready. And this is something we have to be beware of, prophetic people. Yeah. Gifts are from God. Yes, they, are. they are a manifestation of his spirit. But a gift does not necessitate an activity. Oh, that's good. Just because you have the ability to do does not mean that it's time to do. For instance, if pastor was preaching on a Sunday or whatever day and the Lord gave me a revelation of what he was speaking of, at that time I'm gifted, I'm equipped, this is relevant, it's powerful, but it's not time for me to stand up and say that while the man's preaching. So guess what I have to practice? Self-control. That's good. Discipline. And then after he's done, I'll walk up and whisper in his ear, the Lord showed me something. Would you mind if I shared that? And don't you know if, if it's God's will for it to be shared, that he's going to touch the person's heart to give you the open door? Yeah. That's how we operate in order, according to 
God's spirit is a spirit of order. <laughs> well, the prophet outranks the pastor. Man, you need preparation. That's good. You need discipline. Really, you need to be rebuked. Because whoever is setting as the angel of the house, that right there, even though the gift may have a different ranking, that's the authority. Oh, I'm working hard today. Yeah. <laughs> Preparation deals with the quality of the instrument. Okay? Now, you're the instrument, but what preparation deals with is the quality of the instrument. Now, I'm a carpenter for a living. I don't buy cheap tools. I don't do it. They got a place, uh, um, I can't even think the name of it, but they had these two called Chicago, Brother Clarence. We Harbor, just act like Harbor Freight. Yeah, Harbor Freight. That's them. <laughs> now Harbor Freight's got some good stuff like wheels for your cart, uh, rubber clamps. You know, they got some certain stuff. Oh, ninety nine cent. <laughs> Don't get certain things out of there <laughs> if that's your occupation, because when you need it the most. Something that is not a quality made deal and it's just slapped together is going to fail you in the midst of really doing hard work. What is that saying? Let's make it practical. If you rush through the process and you want to hurry up and get out of the shame and the embarrassment of not knowing who you are in the kingdom and, and even though you're in all this revelation and stuff God's not manifesting who you really are if you're in a rush to get out of that you're going to fall apart when it's critical that's good, Pastor <laughs> uh, what if God don't want nobody to recognize you what if that's coming directly from God I, this I, boy, hey, okay. that's good. I'm only saying what I know. True. Preparation deals with the quality, and so God wants to make the person who He calls as a prophet to be of precision, yeah. to be of quality. Let's look at some quality things. I'm talking about integrity. Oh, that's good. Uh, character. Uh. Faithfulness, honesty, huh? Loyalty. Mm -hmm. That's quality stuff. Quality. I, you know, what kind of, would you want a person to prophesy to you who's known to lie no. under pressure? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, just, just, you know, real talk. No, sir. <laughs> They're known to cheat on taxes. Mm -hmm. no, thank you. They're known to you know, well, they'll cut a corner. I don't think I really want you touching me right. with your hands or your mouth. Because right, I don't know what's coming out. I don't know. You know, I don't know if I have really spent enough time with the Lord to protect me from what you got on you. Yeah. I just want to be careful here. Yeah. You know, can I just be honest here? I'm not that deep, Sister Monisha. That, you know, me and Michael the Archangel, he's waiting in my closet. <laughs> <laughs> he's not in there. No. I'm a man that, it, that is, that it has weaknesses, mm -hmm. tendencies, that has a strong dependence on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, man, I'm careful. Mm -hmm. I'm not in fear, but I'm careful. Yeah, that's good. Why? Not going to just rush into nothing. Yeah. Now, if the Lord put me a fire on me, I'm gone. No. But just, you know, yeah, no. Okay, so let's move into this. Uh, it, 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 preparation also deals with making, breaking, shaping. Man, I, I could spend the rest of the time on that, but I'm not. You can just look them up, making, breaking, shaping. We deal with pottery. We deal with uh, the gold that is burnt. You know, we deal with all that. Okay, now, purity is another thing of quality. <laughs> and Lord, please help me. Purity. Purity, that's good. In the prophetic. That's quality. 
He might not say much, but when he say something, it's from God. Oh, yeah. I'd rather have that than to write 12 novels on the prophetic and they, they got to cross some stuff out in there. Yeah. yeah, you made a lot of money, but uh -huh. mm, you know, chapter 6, I just don't know about that. Mm -hmm. That lines up with the Bible. Okay, so now let's deal with an area in preparation. Fear. Fear must be removed and replaced. You hear that, Tanya? Fear must be removed and replaced. Jeremiah 1.8. This, this is so important. Fear must be removed and replaced. Okay? Now, as I look up uh, uh, the word afraid in Hebrew, it dealt with being frightened. And so I looked at some synonyms for the word frightened, afraid, alarmed, fearful, horrified, horror struck, hysterical, scared, scary, shocked, spooked, terrified. All right? Those are synonyms. Antonym means the opposite is fearless and unafraid. And so the Lord wants to remove Anything connected to or that is synonymous with fear. Yeah. All right? Jeremiah 1.8. Let's read that. This is part of the process. Jeremiah 1.8. Well, what if they don't get up, Lord? You ever heard that voice in your head? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what if it don't happen? Right. You know, I looked at it. There was another thing. It was the uh, uh, another tense of the word. And it said to be. Uh, man, I knew I was going to forget it. It's where you're hesitant. Mm -hmm. That's not the, the word, but you're hesitant. It's a transient verb of uh, um, being fearful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's where you're hesitant. It begins with an A. It's going to come to me as I'm talking here. Mm -hmm. So let's let's deal with this. Huh? Yeah, you ain't gonna get, you ain't gonna help me. We're gonna be in we're gonna be like uh Wheel of Fortune up here. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah 1 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Notice, God allows the people to stay with the mean mug. My God. Mm. Notice this in the training, in the preparation. He's going to put you in a situation that is adverse. He's not going to change the adverse because he has to develop a quality in you that's able to handle the adverse and still accomplish the assignment, still carry out the authority that's on the mantle. See, it can't, it, it's not just going to be pleasantries, not the real prophetic office. It's not pleasant you because you've been you've been sitting here for a, a reason that has not been addressed until you got here. And so most of the people that's in the midst of it is comfortable with it. But you are called to shake it up. Come on, Pastor Ron. Am I yelling? Go ahead. He said, don't be afraid of their faces. Why? Because I'm with you to deliver you. So that, that means that not only are they going to look with the mean mug, they're going to do some mean stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? The Lord is allowing it to be so because for him to be the righteous judge, he has to allow certain things to transpire. Mm -hmm. Why? What is he judging? Works. Mm -hmm. Works. And so he allows, you know, we read this in several places in the Bible, that the, the, the fullness of of the Gentiles had not come yet. Mm -hmm. So he let Sodom and Gomorrah keep on doing what they was doing. But then it comes a time, okay, that's it. So during our preparation, we will face adverse things. Mm -hmm. But fear must be dealt with and removed. Okay? This is what he told him. Don't be afraid of their faces. Let's look at what he tells Ezekiel in 2.6. 
Ezekiel 2, 6, he says, uh, you son of man, don't be afraid of them. Okay, now it ain't faces, it's them. Who is that? People in high places. People who may have the title of prophet. Yeah. People that might have the title of apostle. Oh, the apostle's above the prophet. Well, God is above the apostle. God is above the president. And if God sent the prophet to speak to the president and the apostle both, you got more authority than all of them. So he said he has to remove fear because the first thing that Jeremiah did say, oh, I can't do this because I'm too young. Fear. Fear. Okay? Fear. He said don't be afraid of them. Nor be afraid of their words. Yeah, we know they're scorpions. We know they're devils. We know they're rebellious. But don't be afraid of them. Even if they reject what you say, Keep saying it. Why is this important? Because operating in fear will allow you to be controlled by people and not by God. Amen. That's so true. Can't do that. The prophet is called in the Bible the servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is, this is, ooh, I, I felt something. This is empowering. You are the servant of the Lord. Well, that's a two-edged sword, partner. Mm -hmm. You better do what he say. Mm -hmm. That's a two-edged sword. You think the people is going to get you. Okay, operating in fear will allow you to be controlled by people rather than God. Let's look at this in the Bible. 1 Samuel 15, 24. We're talking about what? Preparation. 1 Samuel 15, 24. Man, my time's gone. We're going to change this to a three-hour class. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Pastor? I see Pastor on there typing in something. <laughs> 1 Samuel 15, 24. <laughs> 1 Samuel. I was just there. Here it is. Okay. It said, And Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, look at the, look at the, Look at the components. We have the Lord's voice. We have the prophet's voice. We have the people's voice. So he had more than enough to follow with the Lord's voice and the prophet's voice. But fear caused him to go with the people's voice over the prophet and the Lord. Now, we learned this in, in another uh, path to ministry training, that fear can be a work of the flesh, but it also can be a spirit. Mm -hmm. There's degrees, levels. Mm -hmm. and, but fear calls him to go with the people's voice over God and the prophet who he could see. Mm -hmm. That's how powerful fear is. This must be addressed. It must be removed. Because now, because of Saul's disobedience, he loses the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I wonder how that relates. You can be, see, you can be in the process of being developed and being prepared, and God say, ah, mm -mm. I know I got a witness. Y'all remember that prophet? He's the no name. He's called the man of God from Judea. And he was told to not go back the way you came. Don't eat no food. Don't drink nowhere. Yeah. And a lying prophet said, an angel told me, I'm a prophet too. An angel told me, you come eat over here with me. And the Lord, the Holy Ghost came through the lying prophet and said, oh, you was not, you was given a command of the Lord. I would have beaten 
Well, I'm gonna die. I might as well just kick his behind. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm already done. I might as well get you too. Oh, Lord. Lord, the man came to a <laughs> from a false prophet to a real one, yeah. and said, "The Lord says." Oh my God, that would. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack now thinking about that. But the man was killed. The pro he wasn't given a second chance. He wasn't given a second chance. Mm. Wonder why we don't have his name. <laughs> see? Oh, he had. See, and this is something else. In preparation, even though... Uh, uh, you are on your way to the office of the prophet. God has things that you can, you're going to do. Oh yeah. That's part of development. It's called on the job training. On the job. I remember God told me to tell somebody I was a prophet. Mm. And I'm talking about this is way back in the day. They was like, well, mm. <laughs> okay, pastor, <laughs> you're going to be a pastor. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what the Lord told me. Right. But I needed to be rejected mm -hmm. so that I would have the confidence not in man's validation, but in God's. But what they never, nobody ever poured the oil on me and say, we accept you as a prophet. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. I don't need it. That's good. Okay? Now, if God want to do it, so be it. But let me tell you what. I'm doing what God say do. You don't got to call me nothing. You can call me Brother Ron. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good with that. Because my name is in heaven on a white stone. Already. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what's on there. But I guarantee you it's something powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for that. Yeah. Now, so this is what Saul did. He was controlled by the people. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm just, this is the last scripture here. Let's go to 1 Samuel 3.15. And then we we, we we done. I got to stop. Man. Jesus. It must be removed. 1 Samuel 3.15. Now, you remember, we talked about Samuel yes. and his call. Yes. <laughs> After the call, what comes? Preparation, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as God gives Samuel this message about him destroying the house of Eli, mm -hmm. we're going to see it right here in verse 15. Look at this. Man, this, this Bible is just so real. Um, and Samuel lay until the morning. Now he just got that message. I'm gonna kill them all. The Lord told him. He's like, Oh my God, my my mentor, you know, my boss man. Then, yeah, he's my like almost like my father. Right. Samuel laid until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel what? Feared to show Eli the vision. Now notice, I'm not saying God didn't want Eli to know. Eli already knew. But notice what fear does to Samuel the prophet. Okay, look, look at what it does. Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel my son. And he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee and more also. Why could he even say that? God do so to thee if he didn't already know what it was. All right? But listen to it. God do so to thee and more also if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every wit and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems him good. Stupid. I would have never said that. I would have fell out crying. Lord, Lord, Lord. I would have went crazy. Please, Lord. I'll work with Samuel. I'll be his mentor. Help me, Lord. I would have, man, please. Oh, let him do what he's saying. Man, that shows a decrepit heart. You have gone astray. So, you know, I, I do have mercy on Eli because he did try to tell his sons, but the Lord let us know you didn't deal with it like you're supposed to. Why? Because your heart wasn't right. 
So here, I want to suggest very strongly that Samuel, the emerging prophet, was controlled by witchcraft. By who? The priests. Use witchcraft on them. The Lord's going to get you. You don't tell me. Uh, the Lord hasn't freed me to say anything. But he had fear already. So fear opens the door for you to be controlled by people. You want to be accepted? You'll get up here and, and prophesy out of presumptuousness. What is that? Arrogance. Pride. I'm a prophet. I can prophesy. But did God tell you to do that? All right. He may not have to tell you, but are you sensing him speaking and releasing you to speak? See, fear, it must be dealt with. It must be removed. So we're stopping right there on, the, on our next deal. We're going to deal with the caution of the tongue. We're going to deal with uh, uh, God's righteous requirement revealed. And we're going to deal uh, with pride. All of this in the, the, the part of preparation. God bless you. I just don't want to stop, but I must. We're just, we're just excited about the spirit of the Lord, the word of the Lord, and what he is doing in our lives. Listen, I want to be exactly what God has ordained me to be. Amen. And I want to be around people. Listen, remember the New Testament model, the New Testament paradigm for the prophetic is not a one man band. It is a group that carries out a function through individual parts. Mm. Huh. Man, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pray. Father, I thank you for your people. I thank you for your word. We pray, God, that what you have purpose to be accomplished through this training for your people would be accomplished. We pray that you move all flesh out of the way. Move all of the mess out of the way. Allow your Holy Spirit to govern us, to shape us, mold us, and make us. Give us the confidence we need to move at the point in time. Develop us. Teach us. Use us. In this dying age. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Bless our parents and first lady. Bless them in a mighty way. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Good night.